and welcome back to Avocet Math. In this uh, video series, we're going to be exploring a generator function for Pythagorean triples. And uh, just remind ourselves where we left off. We're trying to solve the Pythagorean equation for now x, y, and z uh, elements of uh, positive integers. And we're also trying to limit our search for uh, x, y, and z that do not share a common factor. So we're looking for reduced Pythagorean triples. And what we found from our discussion last time is that we could limit our search to the case where uh, x is an even number, y is an odd number, and z is an odd number. And one thing we can uh, conclude uh, fairly quickly additionally is that uh, while the x, y, and z we search do not share a common factor, it's also true that no variable pairs share common factors. So the greatest common divisor of x, y is also 1, as is uh, the pair y, z and the pair x, z. And the reason for this is, is pretty straightforward. If uh, we can show this by sort of an indirect proof, if x and y did share a common factor, for example, say the common factor of 3, then x squared would have a, a factor of 9 y squared would have a factor of 9. If you add both of these two factors of 9, the z squared would also have a factor of 9. And then the z itself, once you take the square root, would share a common factor of 3. So anytime any two of these share a common factor, then all three of them would share a common factor. And again, we don't want to have any common factor among all three. We're looking for reduced Pythagorean triples. And so that basically leads us to the conclusion that uh, no variables in pairs uh, share a common factor. And that will be important in the, uh, the follow-up uh, arguments that we'll make. So also we found that uh, when we analyzed the equation in terms of even, odd, odd, we came to the conclusion that our solution, Pythagorean solution, can be written in the form x squared over 4 equal to z plus y over 2 and z minus y over 2, where each of these terms now are whole numbers. And uh, what we can do at this point is uh, uh, continue further with our analysis. And one thing we can observe is that once we've reduced the x squared over 4 into a product of these two terms, we can find that we can also take these two product terms, add them together to reconstitute the value of z, see that uh, z divided by 2 adds to z divided by 2 to generate z. The y's cancel. And likewise, we can take the difference of these two terms to regenerate the value of y. And that's important because we know that x and y now share no common factor from above. And from that, it turns out we can conclude that these two product terms also share no common factor. And we can demonstrate that again with an indirect proof argument. If, for example, uh, the two product terms did share a common factor, say a common factor of 3, then when we, when we take that common factor of 3 and reconstitute z by summing these two factors, that factor of 3 will basically filter down into the variable z. And when we take these two factors and regenerate y, the difference will also uh, filter down the factor of 3. So then z and y will share a factor of 3, and we know that z and y do not share any common factor. So now we know that the, the, the two groupings here share no common factor, and the next question comes about as to what is the nature of these two factors. So on the left-hand side, we basically see an even numbered square divided by 4, which is also a squared. So essentially this is a perfect square. And so the right side also has to match the uh, form of a square number. And we know what that form looks like. It looks like something, uh, for example, like, uh, say, 2 squared, 3 to the 4th, 5 squared. Essentially, prime factorizations with even exponents. That's the key here. Each of these prime factors have to have an even exponent in order to satisfy the condition of a square number. And so the question then comes up as to how do these prime factors then distribute themselves into these two factors 
uh, z plus y divided by 2 and z minus y divided by 2. And there are basically three possibilities for each of these factors. Either the factor of 2 squared could all go to the left factor, it could all go to the right factor, or it could get split up where a 2 goes into either or goes into one of each. And likewise, the 3 could either go into all the left factor, all the right factor, or it could get split up in some way. And likewise for the 5. And from the arguments that we saw before, we know that the factors basically have to go one place or the other, but they cannot get split up. And the reason for that is, is again, similar to the arguments we used before. If the 2 did get split up, and 1, 2 went to the left, and 1, 2 to the right, then that would mean that these two factors now share a common factor of 2. And if they shared a common factor of 2, then when we added them to form z and subtracted them to form y, then y and z would also share a common factor of 2, and we know that they'd share no common factor. So likewise, the 3 has to go either to the left or the right, but it can't split up. The 5 has to go to the left or the right, but it cannot split up. And so essentially, the, the factor form of each of these left and right factors has to be something of the form 2 to the squared, something to the fourth, something to the squared. Essentially, the even exponents have to appear in both the left and the right factors. And what that means, then, is that these factors are in themselves square numbers. So not only do we have a square number on the left side of the equation, but these two factors are also square numbers, and that's a critical observation. So uh, at that point, we can basically label these two square numbers, and we'll call the left one t squared and the right one s squared. And from this product relationship, we can then determine that this x squared divided by 4 is given by the product t squared s squared. And we also know something else about t and s, which will, which will come in in a, in a second here, and that is we know that the factor of 2 can either go to the t or it can go to the s, but it can't go to both. And that's important because the 2 will determine which of the t and which of the s is an even number. And so what we then know is that uh, either t can be even or s can be even, but they can't both be even. So uh, essentially they're going to be of odd parity, meaning that uh, one of them will be even and one of them will be odd. Uh, but uh, aside from that, we also know that the t and the s will not share any common factor, and that'll come into uh, come into play later. So again, now that we've uh, determined what these factor forms are, we can then basically deduce our equation. We can use the x squared divided by 4 equal to t s squared to determine that x is equal to uh, 2 t s. By using these equations to regenerate z and y, we find that z is equal to t squared uh, t squared plus s squared, and y is given by t squared minus s squared. So that seems like a pretty simple relationship. Let's let's try to explore that and see uh, what that table might look like if we try to examine what uh, t and s give in terms of uh, the value of x that we've determined to be 2ts, uh, y, which we've determined to be t squared minus s squared, and z, which we've determined to be t squared plus s squared. So let's take a look at some uh, choices for t and s, where we know that t and s have to be relatively prime, and they have to be uh, either one has to be even and the other one has to be odd. So let's look at the simplest example, the case of 2, 1. 2 t s is equal to 2 times 2 times 1, that's 4. t squared minus s squared, 4 minus 1, 4 squared minus 4, 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. t squared plus s squared, that's 5. So that's a Pythagorean triple. Maybe we just got lucky there. Let's take a look at another value for ts. t equal to 3, s equal 2. So again, they're relatively prime, and they're of opposite parity. One is odd, one is even. And plugging that into our formula, 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. Uh, t squared minus s squared, 9 minus 4 is 5. 
t squared plus s squared 9 plus 4 is 13. So that too is a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so this equation seems to be working. Let's look at uh, one or two more. t of 4, s of 1, again, they're uh, relatively prime. They don't share a common factor, and they're opposite parity, meaning one is even, the other one is odd. Uh, 2ts is 8. t squared minus s squared, 16 minus 9 is 15. t squared plus s squared is 17, so that too is a uh, Pythagorean triple. And let's look at just one more, 4, 3, 2ts, 24, t squared minus s squared is 5, t squared plus s squared, 25. That, too, is a Pythagorean triple. So there you go. We have a very convenient formula for generating Pythagorean triples, not just Pythagorean triples, but reduced Pythagorean triples that don't share a common divisor. And uh, the important thing in this whole development is not necessarily the result, although it is an interesting and useful result, but the, the type of logic that we used in order to extract this result, that's what's really key, and that's what's going to show up in the AIM and the U.S. AMO type problems. This ability to examine factor groups, to notice relationships where square numbers appear, to notice that you can regroup these things and that common factors in these regroupings will tend to filter through the addition and subtraction of terms. And then also this last argument where we knew that the uh, form of the factors was uh, a set of prime factors with even exponents and that these factors in fact had to distribute in such a way where they ended up either in the left factor or the right factor but they could not split up. That was a very critical argument in this generation of the uh, the Pythagorean formula that we, uh, we came to. So I uh, hope you understood that and uh, kind of a difficult thing to follow. This is also described in the the PDF uh, note file that was distributed earlier in this uh, Dropbox set. So go back and take a look at that as well if this is somewhat confusing. And in the next uh, video lecture, we'll do a little recap on this and explore this result a little further. And that'll pretty much cover our treatment of uh, the Pythagorean triple generator function. So see you at the next video. Bye-bye.